Hi guys. It is a gloomy day. Good Lord, it's afternoon here now. Here in the end times on this gloomy Monday in an undisclosed location. Somewhere in upstate New York on this uh, gray Monday, August 13th, 2018. So I found myself in the company of my old buddy Saddam Hussein and his boomer chick to join me on these two rants of my Doomer Headline Roundup rant. I just finished part one where I went and looked at the various climate change headlines today. So now I'm going to spend a few minutes going over some headlines that have nothing to do with climate change taking down a collapsing planet, but I'm going to start off continuing the good news that I had a couple of days ago about this uh, uh, Monsanto trial where Monsanto was found guilty of being the lying sacks of shit that those evil fuckers are and ordered to pay like $289 million to this guy uh, who got cancer from that their damn roundup. Uh, so obviously this is a big story all over the, the business pages today. Hallelujah. I need to get an applause button. Never been able to find a good applause button. Bayer shares fall 10% after Monsanto's Roundup cancer trial. Um, Bayer shares plunged more than 10% this morning after a California jury ordered the German company's newly acquired Monsanto subsidiary to pay $289 million for not warning of cancer risks posed by its weed killer. Uh, the case against Monsanto, which was bought by Bayer this year, for $63 billion is the first of more than 5,000 similar lawsuits over the company's glyphosate-based weed killers. Um, Monsanto said on Friday that it would appeal the verdict, which is the latest episode in a long uh, about whether Roundup causes cancer. Monsanto will appeal. Oh shit, Sherlock. Quoting Monsanto, the jury's verdict is at odds with the weight of scientific evidence. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. And what is the French news service? How are they playing this story? Glyphosate under fire from San Francisco to Sri Lanka. Glyphosate, the world's most widely used herbicide and the active ingredient in Monsanto's weed killer Roundup, is the subject of fierce controversy all across the globe today after a U.S. court on Friday uh, ordered Monsanto, and we, we've been through this, so they go around the, uh, the world and hallelujah all over the planet today. People are uh, gunning for glyphosate and Monsanto. Uh, they, they go from the U.S. to Europe, Argentina, Brazil, Salvador, Sri Lanka. Uh, Anyway, the war is on. Hallelujah. We do have some good news. Okay, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but I have to say, even for Fox News, this headline is, is pretty, pretty fucking sick and twisted. Uh, you might have heard that after 17 days, that grieving orca mother that's been carrying around her dead calf uh, has finally abandoned it. Many versions of this, and this is how Fox News headlined the story. Orca that carried 
dead, decomposing calf for weeks now returns to fun with friends. That was yes, yeah, the grieving mother, as she's done with it, she is now having fun with her friends. An endangered orca that captivated the world with its, quote, tour of grief has returned to its pod after spending more than two weeks clinging to her dead and decomposing calf. Uh, so she's now back having fun with her friends, trying to find something to eat, apparently. This is the Fox definitions, uh, definition of having fun with your friends. The Center for Whale Research in Washington said the whales have been struggling due to lack of salmon. So the whales are starving. So yes, uh, yep, uh, I cannot think of a better way to have fun with my friends than to go on a desperate search for something to eat. Thank you, uh, Fox News. Okay, I haven't checked in with the South China Sea. Uh, what can go wrong with this headline? You know, how many times have I made the prediction that the South China Sea is where World War III will erupt? And there's nothing in this headline to uh, make me change that prediction. <clears throat> Japan will soon help Vietnam extract gas from the South China Sea. How will China respond? Hmm. Yes, Japan, uh, they just repeat the headline, okay. In a move likely to draw the ire of China. Bullshit detected. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, wrong button. In a move likely to draw the ire of China. No shit, Sherlock. Two Japanese firms have signed an agreement to help Vietnam develop and sell natural gas located in the South China Sea. Uh-huh. Okay, what is China? Has China made a a statement yet? Uh anyway, I guess that we're waiting for a a response from China. Let's take a wild guess what the response is going to be, and there might be some dots connected between Japan will soon be doing this to this next uh, headline with the word soon in it from the national interest. You might soon see this Chinese fighter all over Africa and Latin America. And this is talking about uh, China, uh, you know, more and more supplying arms to Africa and Latin America, which just coincidentally, you know, where China is ramping up all of these trade agreements to move all of these natural resources to go into all of these third world banana republics all over Africa and in Latin America to rape and pillage them to get all of the goods out, uh, you know, and, and to take over there to China, wow. Uh, and you can expect to see more and more Chinese military equipment showing up in these same countries. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, th 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 this, is, this is a real brain teaser. Uh, 
Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, guys, this is just uh, breaking this all down. Uh, I, I, I think I, I think we get it. Well, a tiny few people on on the planet get it. Not sure if that headline's going to have anything to do with this headline also from the national interest. What is Israel's great weakness? How about an attack on its nuclear reactors? And, and anybody who thinks that this story is, uh, is only limited to Israel, uh, I, I can't believe that uh, some of them terrorists haven't already either flown a plane or blown up uh, these nuclear reactors. Uh, wherever there's a nuclear reactor on this planet, uh, you're, you have a sitting duck d just waiting. It's, it's just a big, uh, come and get me. Uh, this is just taking a look over what's going on uh, over there in Israel. Uh, as Israel's nuclear establishment has begun conducting drills simulating attacks against the country's nuclear reactors, fears about the vulnerability of Israel and other countries' nuclear reactors are likely to grow in the coming years and decades. Although Iran's missiles cannot realistically threaten Israel's nuclear reactors at the moment, the real question is, how long will that continue to be the case? It wasn't long ago that a country like China didn't have guided missiles. Now it's believed that Beijing has missiles that can threaten moving targets like U.S. aircraft carriers at long distance, and history has consistently shown that technology, including missiles, inevitably spreads. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, from the shithole country of Israel to the sh one of the great shitholes of the planet, this would be the city of Jakarta. Jakarta, which I'm pretty sure is in Indonesia. Yeah, the, it's the capital of Indonesia. Jakarta, Indonesia, is the fastest sinking city in the world. The Indonesian capital of Jakarta is now home to 10 million people, but it is also one of the fastest sinking cities in the world. If this goes unchecked, parts of the megacity could be entirely submerged by 2050, say researchers. And it's not just about floods. This massive city is literally disappearing into the ground. There you go. What a loss to the planet. Jakarta in Indonesia, if there is one city we need to send under the ground, it would be that shithole. Anyway, let's leave and that's what is the latest news from the Mediterranean Sea. Aid group says ships not willing to save Mediterranean migrants. No shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> migrants, you know, we're talking about African migrants in distress at sea, have told their rescuers that sh several ships pass them by without offering them assistance, a European aid group said Sunday. Hmm. The uh, SOS Mediterranean 
said in a statement that due to the recent refusal of Italy and Malta to let rescue vessels carrying migrants dock, ships might be now unwilling to get involved, fearing they will be stranded with migrants aboard and denied a port to disembark them. Yup, yup, yup. Uh, hmm. Nearly three quarters of the most recent boatload of 141 people rescued this weekend were from Somalia and Eritrea. Yep, yep, yep. But as long as we're talking about the shithole country of uh, the shithole continent of Africa, let's go there to the shithole country of Mozambique for the No Shit Sherlock headline of the week. But good for you, French News Service and Yahoo News for talking about this in the mainstream media. Teen pregnancy epidemic feeds Mozambique's population boom. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, Mozam Mozambique's child marriage and teen pregnancy rates are among the highest in the world, a driving factor in the population explosion in this poverty-plagued Southern Africa nation. After emerging from a brutal war in 1992, uh, Mozambique saw its population swell 40% uh, in the two decades, um, that's not even two, between 1992 and 2017, whatever that is, the population swelled 40%, reaching 29 million uh, people today. And the vast majority of them are you, you know are under the age of uh, 20 probably it, it doesn't offer that statistics and around half of Mozambique's women marry before they turn 18 of girls between 15 and 19 46 point four percent are either pregnant or have already become mothers. No shit, Sherlock. These early marriages and pregnancies are impoverishing the community as young parents cannot feed their children and their mothers leave school. As a result, 58% of Mozambican women are illiterate. And then they, they tell this story, guys. Uh, I, I just, I just, I, 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 I can't resist sharing this story. Emma Nelmane, now 13, gave in to the advances of a man she met in the market who offered her three euros for her virginity. Explained her grandmother talking about her then 12-year-old virgin granddaughter, quote, she saw a chance to get the same shoes her friends were wearing. So she let this grown man for three euros take her virginity uh, at age 12 so she could buy the same kind of shoes her friends were wearing. And when she fell pregnant, Emma was flabbergasted. Quote, I did not know you could get pregnant by making love, she said, breastfeeding seven-month-old Ismali in the dirt yard outside her grandmother's home. I can't go out 
and play with my friends anymore, she said. Guys, we're fucked. All right, how about this no shit Sherlock story? Wow. Kenya arrests two top officials for suspected corruption over new $3 billion Chinese funded railway. No shit, Sherlock. Hmm. Kenyan authorities have arrested the head of the agency that manages public land and the boss of the state railway on suspicion of corruption over land allocation for the new $3 billion railway. Uh, the line connecting the capital with East Africa's main port was funded by China and is one of the biggest infrastructure projects of President Uhuru Kenyatta, whose government this year embarked on an anti-corruption drive. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. But uh, speaking of the of China of the Chinese in Kenya, is Taiwan part of China? Technically, uh, probably not. Close enough. Uh, hippo kills Taiwan tourist in Kenya. A Taiwanese tourist has died after being bitten in the chest by a hippo he was trying to photograph in Kenya. Chang Ming Kuang, 66, was tracking the animal at a wildlife resort. Uh, and I guess the hippo was grazing on the hotel lawn and this clueless moron walks up to a, a, an adult hippo. It didn't say he's trying to get a selfie. Okay, I think he was just trying to get a picture of the hippo grazing on the hotel lawn and was gored and killed by the hippo and a second tourist also from Taiwan was injured. Six people have been killed by hippos in the area this year. But we're going to go back over to our own shithole country to the shithole state of of Indiana. Many versions of this story. Man accused of murdering and eating his ex-girlfriend ruled mentally fit to stand trial. You know, why shouldn't he be? A man accused of killing his former girlfriend, I guess it is his former girlfriend, and eating parts of her body has been deemed mentally fit to stand trial by a state psychiatrist. This is Joseph Oberhansley, uh, is accused of breaking in to his former girlfriend's house, raping her, stabbing her to death, then sawing her head and body open to eat her brain, heart, and lungs. Uh, his fitness for trial has been questioned, noting uh, he was, quote, suspicious, paranoid, uncommunicative, and agitated. But, anyway, he is the cannibal, is fit to stand trial, but we're going to wrap up finally here at 1 o'clock in the afternoon with this all-important top 100 stories of the year asking the question, is a bidet right for you and your bathroom? Do you need a bidet? Well, that's a matter of very personal opinion. More people are answering, yes, I do need a bidet 
because I do not know how to wipe my own clueless fucking moron ass. If you have not tried a bidet, it replaces your existing toilet seat attaching to the bowl. It draws water from the toilet supply line and electricity from a nearby outlet. I'm already detecting a problem here. So it has water and electricity aiming at your shit smeared asshole and with the press of a button, a wand extends from, I don't know where, a wand extends beneath you and trains a stream of water powered by an electric pump to clean your backside. Some bidets have fancy options such as butt dryers. The primary benefit for all bidet types is an easier than wiping cleaning experience. Guys, if you are so fucking clueless, you do not know how to wipe your own ass, then yes, I don't even know what the price on these fucking things are. My guess is probably $5,000 uh, to help you uh, clean your clueless fucking moron ass. And we wonder why we're so fucked on this planet. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up because I am starving. And I need to go. I hear there's a Middle Eastern restaurant. So, uh, I'm going to bid farewell to, uh, to Saddam Hussein and his boomer chick girlfriend and go find me some, uh, some falafel. Bye, guys.